Hello everyone, Fizgus here. Welcome to another tutorial. In this one we will go over the data cartridge and its different tabs. This tutorial is not intended to be an extensive explanation about the data cartridge and its associated systems, but I believe that if you follow this tutorial, you'll be able to use the data cartridge effectively. Let's get into it. The targets tab is where you check targets you previously marked on the 2D map via the recon screen. The first line, target steer points, are used for referencing targets by selecting the associated steer points. These are used by GPS guided weapons, for example, like JDAM, JSAW, SDB, etc. The second line, weapon targets, is used by weapons onto which a coordinate has to be inputted prior to the flight, for example, spice weapons. The EWS tab is where you configure the amount and type of countermeasure that will be released when a specific program is activated. This drop-down menu selects the program. This one selects the type of countermeasure. Below, you can define the burst interval and quantity, the sequence interval and quantity. To the right of that, you can select if you want to receive a warning if the countermeasures are running low, as well as if you want to receive an audio notification, chaff flare, when the program is activated, etc. I will cover this page more extensively in a future video dedicated to countermeasures. On the MFD tab, you can select which pages you want on each MFD for any of the master modes in the aircraft. Select the master mode on this drop-down menu. To the right of that, select the MFD you want to configure. Toggle if bullseye position is displayed. Then select the primary, secondary, and tertiary pages that should be on the MFD by default. On current, choose which of the pages you configured above should be the selected page by default. On the COM tab, configure the radio frequencies for each of the channels. The easiest way to get this configured, especially on a campaign, is by pressing COM plan on the lower right corner. This will populate the radio channels automatically. One thing to note is that the VHF channels for in-flight comms in a package start at channel 15 for the first flight, channel 16 for the second flight, etc. The reason why I mention this is, in this example, I know that I'm the second flight of this package. Therefore, in order for me to be able to communicate with my wingman, I should be on channel 16. I cycle that channel and then enable default. On the IFF tab, you can configure the IFF information for the flight. I personally don't feel that this requires any configuring 99.9% .9 of the time, and I personally never change any of these values, nor would I know how to. Unless you're flying some extremely advanced missions in multiplayer, changing anything on this tab is pointless. Simply press on IFF plan on the lower right corner to get this auto-populated. On the Link 16 tab, you can configure the data link information for your mission. You should start by pressing Link 16 plan on the lower right corner. This will auto-populate the tab. For the majority of times, this should be sufficient. Link 16 is a complex topic that requires its own dedicated video, which I might make in the future. In the meantime, I will leave a link to a tutorial about Link 16 by Aviation Plus in the description. I highly recommend that you go watch that video. On the HARM tab, you can configure the settings for HARM missiles if you're carrying them. On the different tables, you can enter the different ALEC codes for the different threat systems you want preloaded on your aircraft. You can find a table with all these codes in the BMS manual, page 469. On the right, you can configure the preset delivery modes, HARM is sensor, or position. Underneath, when the delivery mode is position, you can select the submode, pre-briefed, equation of motion, or range unknown. Below that, you can select the default tertiary table that will be loaded on the missile at launch. I covered all these modes and submodes in my HARM tutorials, so if you didn't watch them yet, I suggest you do so. After you're all done with configuring the data cartridge, I suggest quickly checking through all the tabs. Quickly make sure that the information on them is correct and then, if it is, press on save on the lower right corner. This step is indispensable. 
Also, if you create thread circles on the 2D map, you need to save the data cartridge after creating them. After you're in the aircraft, go to the DTE page, and then press load. And there we have it. Data cartridge is an essential tool for operating the F-16. If a data cartridge is not saved for the mission, operating the aircraft systems will become significantly harder during the mission, forcing you to enter a tremendous amount of data manually. I hope this tutorial was helpful, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next one.